Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria 3 where we are currently proceeding apace with our recovery here and we're currently spending down our credit a little bit but we're also paying altogether too much on subsidies. There's no doubt about that. 1.18 million for Motor Industries but they're just... I don't know. I'm, I'm currently thinking is it even worth it to do that? If we don't, what ends up happening? The cost of our railway subsidies remains about where it's at to be honest it remains about where it's at motor industries are just not productive at this moment and the question is why is that well we can definitely take a look at our motor industries here and we can see there's no cash reserves here we're producing 1.67 k engines okay and we can see our weekly balance is minus 140 k if we unsubsidize that, well, it's going to start downsizing. It's going to be unable to hire. It doesn't have the funds to hire anyone. So it comes down, I think, A, steel is too expensive. B, oil is too expensive. C, wages are up there. There's no doubt about that. But it's not just wages. It is not just wages. That's for sure. So we're going to take forward with that still subsidized for the moment. But I definitely feel like there's some design issues here. Specifically, uh, what is this? Police brutality event. Uh, sure, we can't tolerate that behavior. Um, specifically, what I'm talking about isn't necessarily the issue that we've got going on with our motor industries. But I'm more talking about the issue with our railways. And the design issue that I'm thinking right now is that it's a little bit strange to me the way that railways produce money being only transportation. So when we look at our railways, they give us transportation, infrastructure, and urbanization. Sure, that's all well and good. But the primary issue here is that transportation is absolutely bare minimum in terms of cost. And transportation isn't the problem here. So I suppose we could, in theory, substitute to like cargo prioritization. It'll produce less transportation and it'll consume less steel, but it will increase employment. Okay, so here's here's what I'm talking about, though. I, I feel like I got, got off on a bit of a tangent there. Here's what I'm talking about with the design issue. We are required to build railways in locations like Brandenburg in order to have our infrastructure. Because if we don't, if we drop below this, we start to have our issue here where we lose market access, right? And losing market access is really, 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 really bad. So you don't ever want to lose market access when you can help it. Which means that you have to build infrastructure. But, oh, but building your infrastructure ends up overbuilding your transportation. Which means that your railways have to be subsidized. And that's kind of strange to me, to be honest. That's kind of strange. So we're on privately owned right now because we just want the minimum number of employees here. We could, in theory, I mean, one of the major issues here is the fact that we're on electric trains, right? And we could increase our infrastructure output without increasing our transportation output by going to diesel trains. But that means that we'll need more engines and more oil, which means that we need more oil to create more engines and ultimately, this kind of boils down into being we need more oil. So going after Netherlands is maybe not the worst idea. We could think about it. If we were going to do that, we'd want to crank up our military beforehand. And how much would that end up costing? Well... We can bump all of these down right now. Uh, let's switch to flamethrower companies first and then move over. There we go. Just to make sure that that's no longer telling me about new ones. Perfect. So if we were to do this, we are making money for the moment. Okay. So that's fine. We are unproductive importing oil from the Austrian market. So we're going to tick forward for a moment here. Yes, I thought that we might go negative from that. 
Okay, so that definitely means that we need to do something here. So our goods are for military buildings. Primarily ammunition. Okay, so let's take a look at our ammunition here. Uh, this is not actually all that helpful. Let's go into the market here into details and let's find our ammunition in here because this will take me to the screen that I thought that previous one would take me to. Ammunition is currently at maximum price. We're barely selling any. I know that we have a lot of munitions plants. So this is probably a similar issue here where munitions plants are unprofitable. The question is, is our minimum wage the only reason for that or is that only a contributing factor? So that is something we need to figure out. So if we look at our munitions plants here, yeah, we've got basically no employment here. So that's the primary issue here. We don't need to build more munitions plants. We need to actually employ people. Weekly balance is positive. Okay, so we just need people to actually get employed here. Wages aren't the problem at all. Yet, anyway. I, I wonder... This is probably showing us the current wages. Not the projected wages when it's full, isn't it? Well, regardless, we still expect this to be positive as it employs up. I think. I expect this to grow linearly. So we have this weekly positive balance with a throughput of plus 14% due to economy of scale. I expect that to get better as we... Well, not really better. I expect it to remain the same ratio. Yeah, that's the term I'm looking for. I expect this to make this maintain the same ratio. So that shouldn't be a problem. What about this munitions plant? This one's profitable as well. So we're just waiting for it to employ up. Okay. We've got 2.5 million here, and we actually dipped up positive here. Cool. So the question has to be asked, why are we subsidizing the motor industries? And I feel like that's a valid question. Why are we subsidizing the motor industries? The answer is because we have a shortage of engines when we don't. But... I think that we shouldn't be subsidizing these. If we drop this subsidization, of course, this is unprofitable. And we could go down to, like, hand assembly, but I really don't think that's good. We're trying to avoid getting a bunch of oil in here. Engine production does not actually... Oh, that's interesting. 1.2 to 3. Okay, now it's back to negative. Okay, so we can see here we're making tons and tons and tons of money. So that's okay. We'll just leave that be for now. I am concerned about a spiraling effect here. I'm very concerned about that possibility. We'll see what ends up happening with that. But if our engine creation is unprofitable, and our engine cost is nearly maxed, Our main issue is still that input goods shortage of oil, isn't it? And on automobile production, we are consuming oil. And that costs oil as well. So if we do back off of automobile production, that might actually change matters in our favor here. So motor industries go to engine production now. And now they're positive. Very positive. So yeah, it literally just comes down to, we need oil. That's what it comes down to. We can import a little bit from the Austrian market, but we need a lot of oil. So, to that end, let's take a look at our, let's see, 8,092. Number two in the world is who? Uh, can we actually see? Well, we can look at, like, Austria here. Yeah, they're number two. So they are at 5474. We are far stronger than Austria militarily. So, let's go ahead and start a diplomatic play here. We're going to get a little bit aggressive. So, we're going to start a diplomatic play to conquer Friesland. We need it. We're going to face Netherlands and Luxembourg. That's okay. Now, these others may decide to join. We'll see. We're hoping they don't. We're going to try that. It may go poorly. 
for the moment, we should be fine simply mobilizing this fine gentleman here. Okay. And Hohenzollern abandoned us. That's okay. I don't actually care about that. Who can we potentially sway? Hohenzollern. Okay. No one else would be particularly interested here. But if we can get this, that will help our oil production, which is mightily important. I'm going to mobilize this guy as well. There we go. So we're going to mobilize up a couple of these generals, and that's looking good. So they began mobilization and conscription. Hohenzollern is now supporting Austria. Hilarious. And is anyone leaning any direction here? Not currently. We're hoping that they don't because we're too strong on paper. That's the idea here. Luxembourg is no longer supporting us. Hilarious. Hang on. Can we invite them to our customs union? Hypothetically. Uh, we want to be in here. In Luxembourg. Right. They're in a personal union under, under the Netherlands. That's right. Okay. So we don't actually care too much about that. The real question comes down to, does anyone want to try to stop us? We have the strongest economy in the world by a long margin. And we have the strongest army in the world by a pretty wide margin as well. There's now another country that we could apparently sway. And is that sorted automatically to the top of the list? It's actually, it's France. France is really weak. Wow. Okay. I had not realized how weak France is. We shouldn't need help. All we want to do is make sure that nobody joins against us. That's our primary goal. So the escalation is continuing here. Netherlands backed down and just yielded it to us. Beautiful. So the Conservative Party won, but only 58%. So if we look at this, we can see we're in an unacceptable government. A big part of that is due to our taxation. We can get back up to a contested government, I think. Yes, by simply dropping our taxation. So if we do this down to medium taxes, we're still making a good amount of money, but we should no longer be in a contested government. Cool. So that's fine. And most importantly, we got Friesland. That is huge. So first thing that we're going to do is we are going to incorporate Friesland. Second thing that we're going to do is we're going to drop as much money as we possibly can. I don't want a location finder. As much money as we possibly can on oil rigs. We are maxing this out. There we go. So that's underway. We have a free government reform available. Hypothetically, these guys won a lot of the votes. Yeah, bringing both of them into the government would make things bad. We have to remain with the conservative party in charge. Okay. For right now, anyway. And I don't think adding any of these uh, independent parties in would help matters at all. No, it wouldn't. Okay, so we're not going to change our government. This is looking fine. Cool. So all of these oil rigs are going to get finished up soon enough. Where else can we go for oil? Well, let's see if there's anything else we can get. I don't think there's anything else in Netherlands. No. This down here just has logging camps. We could get three oil rigs if we were to take Bremen. I would still like to figure out how to get them out from under their union with Scandinavia. We can't do a conquer state, unfortunately. Okay, we should check over here just to see if there's any oil. Fishing wharves, rye farms, livestock ranches. No. Also, we need to keep in mind, this game is going to end in, like, I think four years? Yeah, like four years. Okay, that actually cruised right along. Cool. So, we may want to just kind of chill and work dip diplomatically here. We've been working very heavily financially. The primary goal of this, of course, was to learn how the economic system works. And I feel like I have a reasonable handle on that at this point. Maybe not the finest of handles, but a reasonable handle on it. Getting access to all of... What is this? Uh, we'll declare neutrality. Cool. 
getting access to this over here is amazing. And we really should actually back off again on our barracks here. There we go. I think our conscription center doesn't actually matter. We can leave this at maximum. Like that. That doesn't cost us anything unless we start to raise conscripts. So that seems good. And yep, that seems all okay there. Our railways should be at steel passenger carriages and we should subsidize and auto expand those. Cool. And I mean, that's more oil production or more oil usage rather. I don't love it, but it is what it is. Let's see, logging camps, hardwood production, chainsaw and rail log carts, steam trawlers, flash freezing. And uh, we want this to be privately owned for now. Whaling stations, huh? Okay. Cool, that looks good. Our oil rigs should definitely remain privately owned for the fewest number of employees. Okay. Cool, that all looks good. Our shipyards can be on arc-welded steamships unless that costs oil. It does not. It does cost engines. But I suppose that's fine. What else do we have in here? A lot of stuff up here. Electric sewing machines, elastics, and automatic power looms. Okay. Precision tools. I'm just checking to make sure that these don't require oil. And places that do require oil, we're bumping back. Because oil is just too much. So bone china sounds decent. Automatic bottle blowers. That does cost oil. So we will avoid that. Tooling workshops. Uh, this is going to be rotary valve engines. There we go. Our paper mills will be on paper bleaching and rotary valve engines. There we go. Chemical plants can go on to improved fertilizers. Brine electrolysis. There we go. Looks good. And urban centers should be on, I believe, market stalls. Power plants should be on coal fired, of course. We just don't have the oil. So, let's see what this is looking like for our oil costs. Let's hop into the market here and check our market price. Oil. Minus 2.7k. Okay. So, we're going to get a bunch of these oil rigs online. And how much does each of these produce? Uh, let's hop into here. Check our oil rigs. 100. Ooh, that's so little. Oh, that's so little. But this is going to generate 2,800 oil just taking this. So that will be a very, very, very good thing for us. Cool. So we've dropped our oil costs tremendously. Our unemployment is still skyrocketing. So I want to go through here and make sure that all of these buildings are set to auto expand. Some of them are not, and they should be. Okay. Uh, that's urban centers. I don't want to subsidize urban centers. Hang on. There we go. Rural areas. Okay. All of this should be auto-expanded as well when possible. Cool. And then our development seems fine and our construction seems fine. Excellent. At this point, we're making a lot of money. So I would like to bump our government, wage our government and military wages up to half. There we go. And we could consider dropping our taxation if... That would end up getting us additional legitimacy. So that would get us plus 10. That would not get us up to a legitimate government. So I don't think that that's currently worth doing. Yeah, I don't think so. Let's tick on forward here. And we're going to spend that money instead on paying down our credit. That'll be fine. Cool. So our oil rigs are going to be done expanding in about four weeks. That's excellent. Nothing too much going on here. This is all looking good, I think. I hope. <laughs> I hope. We have that free government reform, but there's no point. Changing our government does not help. So that's fine. And we're just ticking along here. Our GDP is soaring upward right now. It does bear noting that once we finish up these oil rigs, we may be able to utilize some more oil. So let's let those finish. And then they're going to have to hire. So looking at Friesland here, the oil rigs are now working on hiring. Their cash reserves are quite high. And yep, they're hiring on up. So that's beautiful. Okay. 
So we have input shortages of dye still. We're not surprised about that. We should look at our synthetics plants over here. Yeah, that still needs a lot. Cash reserves are at zero. This is negative in its weekly balance due to the price of wood. Okay, we could definitely think about building up our logging camps, but we don't have any that we could do. Noted. We could build some lead mines. Like, we could build all of these resources that are currently available. We also have some agriculture that we could build. But it seems like resources are definitely something that we need to work on. Iron mines would not necessarily be a bad thing. We could max out our iron mine or our iron mines here just to get all of the resources we can. All of our coal mines, we have access to a lot of coal. Like, a way lot of coal. Indeed. I'm going to try it. Let's see how it feels if we max out all of these resource gatherers. Having the raw resources available will help our economy. The question is, well, this should also be relatively low-skilled jobs to help with all of this unemployment. Overall, I think this is probably a good thing. So no logging camps to be done here, but we can definitely get some fishing wharves going. There we go. And even some whaling stations. So there, that's all of our resources underway. Now we do have access to additional arable land. For the time being, I'm not concerned about that. Hey, there's that 1 billion GDP marker. Fantastic. So this is now the highest GDP we've ever had. And we now have no active research, but I believe we also have all of the technologies. Nope, we are missing modern battle fleet tactics. Okay, so we'll go ahead and grab that. And we'll tick on forward with our construction currently maxed out. Now, one thing to note is we do have some market access issues in Friesland. So, our railway here is really low level. We're gaining 25 infrastructure per level from our railways. And we only need one more. So let's go ahead and get that queued up. But we want to queue that up at the front here for sure. We're going to need to keep an eye on our railways. We queued up a lot of stuff here. Where is railways? Why am I... I'm, I'm being dumb. Railways is right here. So we are going to alt-click to queue that at the top of the queue. So that will now be right here. Cool. So that's underway. And we're going to have to keep an eye on our market access here. If our market access starts dropping too much, then we're going to be very concerned. But this will, in theory, go pretty quick. In theory. This is a 72-week construction queue, and it's a lot, no doubt about that. But we'll keep an eye on this, and if we see our market access dropping elsewhere, we will take, a, we'll take action the same way we did here. So it should be fine. So we're continuing to make money here, and that is, of course, going to paying off our debt. That's great. And our railway costs have dropped somewhat as well. So I want to check now, are we employed here in our oil rigs? Basically, yes. Okay, so let's check in on our cost of oil now. Where are you at, oil? Did I pass you? I must have passed you. Okay, I'm just completely blind. I'm sure you're very angry. Here it is. <laughs> Minus 270. So we're still negative in our oil rigs right now. So that's fine. We have a glass and a dye input goods shortage. We're hoping that that gets fixed by just auto expansion. But for the moment, we're building up all of these ridiculous numbers of raw resource extractions. I feel like that's probably something we should have done earlier on in our economy. But for the time being, yeah, our unemployed is definitely dropping. So that's down to 2.4 million now. That's really good to see. 2.2 million. Yeah, so these are going, going to be like low-level jobs, right? Not many qualifications required. So that should help our unemployment. 
and should also help our GDP to some degree and drive down costs for our higher level industries. All of these should be good things. And I'm wondering why we didn't do this earlier. <laughs> we definitely should have done it earlier. However, it is currently time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we will see how this ends up changing things. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Casserol, ALS Gamer, Kentuin, James, Shadow Wolf, Mlohan80, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Video Games Are Not Real, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Unisol, Kadra, Rogue Corbett, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.